see. It's from my mom. I know this is my birthday gift. But my birthday isn't until like another week. What is it? What is it? It's so light. Doesn't sound like there's much in here. This better not be one of those trick gifts where the boxes get smaller and smaller and smaller. I wish I could see. Oh, it's just taunting me. Now I'm just supposed to sit here and wait until my birthday because I'm not supposed to open this, right? Right? Have you ever been in a situation where you really, really wanted to do something you knew you shouldn't do? Like when you saw a sign on the bench at school that said, don't touch wet paint, suddenly you just wanted to put your hands on it right away, didn't you? Or when you stumbled on that show on Netflix and you knew your parents didn't want you to watch it, nobody was around, and you really, really wanted to push play, didn't you? Or when you forgot to study for that big math test and you found yourself looking at the paper of the super smart classmate in front of you, it was hard to resist copying just a few answers, right? I think we can all relate to the feeling of really, really wanting to do something that we know we probably shouldn't. I definitely know what it feels like. Okay, Christmas when I was 13 years old, my mom asked me to be the taste tester of her famous sweet potato pie. All my job was to do was get the spoon, dip it in the little mixture, the sweet potato pie mixture, and taste it, and then put the spoon back in the sink. I did this in front of her, all was well, it was delicious. Then her phone rings and she had to walk away. And I'm standing there with the spoon and the pie mixture. And y'all, I ate like seven more spoonfuls. So much so that when she came back from her phone call, she looked at the bowl and she's like, how much did you taste test? <laughs> this all comes back to the word temptation. Temptation means wanting to do something that may not be best for us. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, the temptation struggle is definitely real. I mean, I feel like I can't go through even one day without being tempted to do something I know I shouldn't do. Even when I know it's wrong. Even when I know it might not be good for me. Even when I know there could be big consequences. I still find myself being tempted to give in and do it anyways. I think it's safe to say that we're all tempted by things in our lives. And I think for all of us, no matter what the temptation may be, the question is this. Why do I want to do it even when I know it's wrong? I think some of us do it because we don't want to be the only one not doing it. We're motivated by a real case of FOMO, fear of missing out. If everybody else is watching that show or going to that party or saying that word, we don't want to be left out. So even if we know it's wrong, we still do it because we want to feel included or accepted. Or maybe we make the choice to do the thing that we know we shouldn't do because honestly, we don't see what the big deal is. Sure, there might be a consequence or a punishment, but that's only if we get caught. <laughs> What harm could there really be in telling a little lie or cheating on one test or looking at that picture online? Is it really that big of a deal if nobody else knows? Maybe we do it because we feel like we should be able to do it. We wanna be independent. We want people around us to know that we're capable of making our own decisions. We want the freedom to decide on our own. And because of that, sometimes we make choices that we know might not be good for us just to prove that we can, or maybe, we give into temptation because honestly, we just don't know how not to. <laughs> we feel powerless against it. We tell ourselves we won't go back to that website or talk to that person who treats us badly or lie to our parents again. But then we do it just like that. We find ourselves giving into the same temptations over and over and over again. We know it's wrong, but we just can't figure out how to stop. <sighs> The truth is that people have been battling temptation since the beginning of time. The very first humans got created, Adam and Eve, they were tempted to go their own way rather than God's way. They had literally everything they could have ever wanted and still they gave into temptation. Since then, we as humans have been struggling with the same thing. Thankfully, we can look at how people have handled temptation from the very beginning to help us understand where the struggle comes from within us. And I think it's important because the more we understand why we're tempted, the better we'll be able to understand how to respond in a healthy way. So a guy known as the Apostle Paul wrote about this struggle with temptation in the book of Romans in the Bible. Romans was actually a letter that Paul wrote to Christians living in Rome. And here's what he wrote. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human, a slave to sin. I don't really understand myself. 
For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Can you relate? I know I can. So many times I find myself feeling like Paul. I want to do the right thing, but I choose to do the wrong thing instead. Something in us is just pulled toward mistakes. Sometimes over and over and over again. Even when we know it's wrong, we do it. Even when we know the consequences, we do it. Even when we hate the way it makes us feel, we do it. And like Paul, we just don't understand why. Well, let's take a look at what he wrote a few verses later. And I know that nothing good lives in me, that is, in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. I want to do what is good, but I don't. I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. But if I do what I don't want to do, I am not really the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. <sighs> Here's what I love about what Paul wrote here. Paul totally owned it. Here he was, this great Christian leader, owning up to the fact that he struggled with temptation and sin. Wouldn't it be so cool if more people in our lives would own up to not being perfect? If they just admitted that they didn't have it all figured out. I remember wishing more adults were like that when I was in school. Actually, I still wish adults were more like that. Paul admitted that temptation was hard for him. It was something that he struggled with for the same reason that all of us struggle with it. And that reason is sin. It's the thing in us that wants to choose what isn't God's best for our lives. The struggle was real for him then, and I know it's real for us now. It doesn't help that sin is made to look so good. It can look like fun. It can seem like such a small thing. It almost promises that it's gonna make our lives better or give us something we really, really want. That's what makes it so tempting. Even though we know it's not good for us, we're drawn to it. There's something in all of us that makes us want to do the wrong thing sometimes. And that is where we need Jesus. Check out what Paul wrote earlier in his letter to the Romans. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty for our sins. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. God is for you. Do you hear that? Before you even knew you needed him, he was there for you. He loves you and wants what's best for you. And because of that, he sent his son Jesus to free us from all the struggle with sin inside of us. With Jesus's death on the cross, we were given the gift of grace. Now grace means that we don't get the consequences that we deserve, but because Jesus is sacrificed for us, we instead get the chance to start over, to start fresh, to try again, to make the right choice, to choose God's best. So often we think the opposite of giving into temptation is being good, but the truth is it's so much more than that. The opposite of temptation is trusting in God for what is good for you. It's believing that God really does have something better for us, even when the thing we really, really want tells us otherwise. When we believe God wants good for us, it makes resisting temptation a lot easier. And because of Jesus, we can do that. Jesus helps us when we're tempted. He's always by our side when we want to do things that we know we shouldn't. And when we go to him and we trust him, we gain the strength to resist temptation in our lives. We have Jesus to walk alongside us when we struggle. I don't know about you, but that makes me feel like I can conquer just about anything because Jesus helps us when we're tempted. If you feel like you're not getting that help, try these things. First, admit the struggle is real for you. Before we can accept God's grace, we have to admit that we need it. So start by confessing to God that the struggle with temptation is real for you. Tell him what it is you're tempted by. Start by being honest about where you're struggling. Next, ask for his help. We can't do anything about that struggle by ourselves. If we wanna beat it, we need Jesus' help. We need his strength to help us stand strong when we're tempted. We need to be reminded of his love and forgiveness when we give into temptation and we need to start over. So whatever temptation you may be struggling with now, ask for Jesus' help in beating it. Pray that he will give you the strength and wisdom to choose his best for your life. And if you're not sure what it looks like, 
talk to your group leader about it. They can help you see God's grace at work in your life right now. They can help point you toward Jesus in the face of temptation. Give grace to the people around you. None of us are perfect. I'm not, you're not. Neither is the person who makes mean comments on social media, and neither is the teacher who is cranky every day in class, and neither is your stepmom or annoying little sister or tough dad. Remember that just as much as you need grace, so do other people. When the people in your life mess up, give them grace. Show them that you care and know that they can start over. And finally, trust God's heart toward you. Ask God to help you trust that He wants what's best for you. Ask God to help your heart understand that He really is for you, that His intentions for you are so, so good. They're beyond what you can even think of. And if we trust Him, even when we don't understand why, it will end up good for us always. Remember, Jesus helps us when we're tempted. And your group is a great place to be honest about what you're struggling with and to encourage each other to embrace God's help in that struggle. In fact, I just might have to leave this present with someone from my group until my birthday next week. Yeah, I think I'll do that.